Hey friends, my name's Georgie. It is such a joy to welcome you to the Just Breathe podcast where I'll be talking all things breathing to help empower you guys to use the power of your breath to harness your bodies and minds. In today's episode, I'll be chatting to the infamous man from somewhere, Johan van Veren. Johan is a South African actor, adventurer and finder of self and has made quite an impression on TikTok with his 784.8 thousand followers and counting. Johan invites us to join him on his adventures and travels and shares insights to empower, to inspire, to motivate and to open your mind to what's possible. Johan had so many incredible insights to share during our conversation and was so incredibly generous in sharing his story with me. I really, really hope you enjoy this conversation. And if you haven't already, go check out Johan's TikTok channel, Man From Somewhere. I promise you, you will leave feeling empowered, inspired and more confident and motivated than ever before. A little bit of housekeeping, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Just Breathe podcast. Let's keep inspiring people, let's keep empowering people through the power of the breath. All right, let's dive right in to today's totally inspiring and empowering conversation. I know you're absolutely going to love it. Fasten your seatbelts. Here we go. This is episode 30 of Just Breathe with Johan van Veren. Hey, Johan, how's it going? I'm very well, thanks, George. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Honestly, thank you so much for coming and chatting to me today. It's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Yeah. Now, of course, I know you as the man from somewhere, uh, <laughs> from TikTok. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people following you at this point. And as I said to you before, you know, you've been a massive inspiration to me, just the, the scenery in your videos and the authenticity of the messages that you share really, really moved me and, and you know, really picked me up when I, I was feeling low. And so I'd love to know your story and where all this started. Um, do you know, the, the, I, I've, I've had a few of these questions before where people say, sure. well, not, you know, and um I mean, I, uh, and the answer always stays the same. I think for 90% of the people on TikTok, just uh, talking about that side of things was uh, the, the, the cause of lockdown. Um, I think 80% of the adults who started doing that was um, because we were locked in our houses, we couldn't go anywhere. So we needed to get a bit of distraction and uh, TikTok was a, was a good outlet. Um, of course. And people could be authentically themselves in that app and it allowed for that um, to sort of transpire and, and, and come out. And um, to be brutally honest, when I first started doing it, I sort of just did a bit of my acting side of things. Um, of course, my background is uh, I am an actor and a, and a, and a commercial model. Um, I played on that sort of sense where I did a bit of thirst trapping, really, um, to just make the lady smile, for, uh, as to say. And um, nice. yeah, it, was fun. it was good fun and um, it was a good laugh. And then um, I would say probably about five months ago, I did one um, where I just sort of checked in with, with people to make sure they're OK. And yeah. it really resonated with a lot of people, you know, and uh, the, the, the post went viral. And I just felt like, do you know what, this is something that I can actually use in this time to not just help myself, but help a lot of other people out there. Because what I do on a daily basis is if I do come across anything that um, would trigger me, for instance, I would go into that and going, what is the lesson that I can learn behind this? Um, and my journey has probably been going on for about 10 years now. Wow. Intensely, um, intensely really working on myself, I would say is about three years that I have really gone into depth to mm. 
really find my purpose, to find my direction, yeah. um, and then to sort of just establish myself as as a man, as a human being, you know, and and, and what I can give back. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I um, I. I have done a lot of things, like you said yourself. You 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 do a lot of breath work. I've done breath work. Um, I've been to Peru. I went on an ayahuasca retreat for ten mm. days, which was absolutely amazing. Um, I do a lot of meditation work. I follow a guy called Dr. Joe Dispenza, which uh-huh. is is uh, is very close to my heart. You know, I've done uh, quite a few of his retreats. Um, and uh, personally met him, you know, and uh, yeah, it's just been been fabulous. And and the, the beautiful thing I love about his work is, like you explained to me earlier, is you do um, you like to have the science behind the the work itself, and that's what he fascinates me about that side of things is he brings the science out. And as men, for instance, we like to think very analytical. If yeah, things, yeah. If things, <laughs> if we won't believe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that goes back to my childhood. I wanted to take the TV apart to see where those people are inside the TV because I didn't understand how to do it. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> so um, yeah. his work really, really, really resonated with me because he literally breaks it down and explains to you why we do it, um, how to do it, etc. You know, and and um, then uh, yeah, it just it just flows from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, what I love about what you just said there was sort of you referring to sitting with whatever was coming up in your experience and understanding what you could learn from it and you know using your adversity as a tool for growth which really is at the essence of any sort of healing journey isn't it sort of sitting with yourself learning to actually look in the mirror all those bits that you don't like about yourself or that you may feel shame you know with or or guilt or anything like that anything you've been ignoring and actually welcoming befriending those parts and saying hey these are actually my my superpowers and uh and i i can use them and i i just think that with that just your videos are so relatable i think something about you just walking in nature and and the way you start when you just say hey 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 listen hey listen (laughs) just it, it makes it so nonchalant you know there's so many kind of people in the meditation world, even people that I love and respect, where sometimes, you know, you'll go to a session, it'll begin, it's quite serious. And it's like, we're going to explore, we're going to, we're going to delve. Whereas I think the great thing actually about TikTok and the shorter videos as well is that it is just like, hey, here's a quick message, take it or leave it. And and I like that. Beautiful, because it's not just the messages that people relate on there, you know. People aspire or or inspire others by just having a a happy dance, you know, or just being funny in general, you know. That brings up a smile into someone else's day, you know. And that that makes a huge, huge difference, especially in today's day and age and and what what the world's going through at the moment, you know. I I think it's very important that... um, anyone can pick up anyone out there regardless of what the content is they might be doing i mean just walking down the street and giving someone a smile you know can can brighten up that person's day you know and um i mean the the, the main thing for me as well is is where i grew up in south africa the the male generation or um uh, the male sex in South Africa was very suppressed. You know, we we not not that we weren't allowed, but if you were showing emotion or if you uh, you couldn't really talk about it because you were literally bullied in a, in a sense. You know, so it was very very hard to um, to express. And even now, you know, when you when wow. you go back, men in South Africa don't talk. You know, they don't talk about their feelings. Really? Yeah, especially, I mean, if I I can relate to friends of mine, you know, um, love them dearly, but it's it's very hard to um, to sort of have a proper in-depth conversation with them, you know, because of, um, it's just the way that we were brought up, you know, it's not yeah. their fault, it's just the way that it's been like that for generations and generations, and uh, it has moved on a hell of a lot now, Right. So, since, I mean, I've not lived in South Africa for about 25 years now, but... Um, I mean, I do go back, you know, yeah, there, there is still aspects of that past in there, which will probably always be there as, as, a, as a country. But um, that, that was one of the biggest things for me um, was the change in, in, in evolving when I left South Africa and I came to the UK. Um, 
and especially when I came to the UK, I got introduced to different cultures, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different religions. Um, and as a South African, Christianity in South Africa is, is probably the, the biggest religion that most people follow, you know. And I grew up as a Christian and anything beyond Christianity was, was seen as wrong and like basically from the devil, you know. So, wow. It, um, yeah, and I mean, even even sort of like meditation, that sort of stuff, you know, was frowned upon and yeah. crystals and all that sort of stuff, you know, whereas yeah. today, you know, I embrace all of that and mm. uh, I love it. And I, I can what I've what I found was when I came over and I got introduced to all these different, like I say, religions, ethnicities, backgrounds, etc., was I started exploring and I was intrigued and I asked questions and it turned out that 90% of it was exactly the same. Really? Yeah. I mean, if you look at what, 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 what the, what Islam was saying and what, yeah. uh, what Christianity is saying, yes, there's a lot of differences, but there's a lot of things that's the same. I get that vibe too. 100%. Absolutely. Exactly. It's, it's all about the same message and it all comes down to, doesn't it? I love essentially in terms of learning to love yourself acceptance forgiveness and forgiveness of self forgiveness of others and selflessness vulnerabilities all the same qualities and I, I think it's really interesting what you said there with men especially in terms of tapping into your vulnerability as a man yeah. and taking uh, the armor down you know oh, yeah absolutely a little bit um what was sort of hey Go on. Sorry. What was the biggest kind of lesson for you in terms of getting vulnerable? And what do you think is the most important thing for the men of this generation to learn to really embrace? You know, for me, it personally was, uh, I, I mean, I, through, through um, my ex-wife that I was with, she was a, she was a therapist um, and I got introduced through her to uh, into a therapy called EFT. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever come across that or did that. Yeah. Um, and that literally, and it's the same with, with Dr. Joe's work, you know, a lot of the stuff that we, or I would probably say 99% of, of how we live our lives is backed on the back of beliefs. Yeah. Um, your belief system is formed, as you know, in your first six years, you know, even before you were born in your mom's tummy, you start developing these beliefs. Um, and it's very important for us to sort of try to go in there because, I mean, it can be anything that can happen to you in your life um, and that can form a trigger. And my, my, my major response was anger. You know, I could, mm. at the, the flick of a button, I, I could literally go from one personality to another, wow. um, explode in rage just because I've had so much cropped up inside me yeah. that I never were able to express. Um, and then when since I started doing this work um, and really going into myself is I, for me, the key is awareness, you know, and just, yes. just even if you don't make a lot of progress, as long as you are aware that something is not right and you can then go into that and, you know, you can work at your own time and at your own pace. But as long as you are aware, that is the first step for me personally, of knowing you are now going into the right direction because you are aware that you are not on the path or you're not actually res uh, um, not responding is not the right word, but being the best version of yourself, you know, and what is causing that? Mm. Um, and that's what I feel like when, when I really started delving into why that is um, a, a big thing for me was always I, I didn't feel good enough you know I wasn't worthy and what I did a lot of times um, in my past was I literally self sabotaged my my happiness um, right. I felt like I didn't deserve it and yeah. I wasn't worthy of all of these nice things that I got you know because I was very successful at one point business wise and um, still am now today you know I'm happy with what I've got and I'm working towards um, a goal that I've got and, and what I want to do but I feel coming back to your question that it's very important for men to to be able to open up because you you cannot live your best life if you just suppress your emotions and you and you keep that bottled up you know because sooner or later it is going to explode and whether it's going to explode in, in rage or, you know, there's, there's many outlets out there, but uh -huh. we've got to get in touch with 
that feminine side of things as to say to to yeah. be able to be vulnerable to be able to be touch in touch with our feelings and and openly talk about it and cry if you need to cry i mean i'm a cry you know i read a good book <laughs> and i only read the cover and it'll make me cry do you know what i mean ah, i love that yeah and you know i suppose as well it's important to know that whether when even you're saying men embracing the feminine that everyone has masculine and feminine within them and it's just tapping into the yin and the yang and those two sides Absolutely. and and finding that balance and you know if you want to go all sciencey that homeostasis within the body it's all there's two sides to every coin right even if you go That's with the it. parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. both active but if one is dominant like when you said that reactive can be triggered into anger at any point yeah. in that adrenalized fight or flight the yeah, body yeah, yeah. Is, is totally out of balance and so finding that balance and I, I agree with you in terms of every even religion anything that has a positive hopeful message religion spirituality any breathwork practice you will find at the core of it is awareness and intention Absolutely. having yeah having an awareness having a willingness to listen yeah. to listen and to look inward and yeah. having the intention to become the best version of yourself to better that's exactly the willingness is, is a big key point there because um i mean uh, for many years you know i i knew all this stuff and i i listened to it all but if you're not willing to open up and be vulnerable and accept that yes i need help in that sense and i, I need to get that sorted um you can take a horse to the water but you can't make a drink yeah 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 <laughs> i love that <laughs> you've got to be willing to uh to be able to to or willing to work on yourself and and like I said, be vulnerable and, and dive in, man. And yeah. it's, worth it. yeah. tell you that, it's definitely worth it. And in order to, to work on yourself, you need to also be willing to actually sit with yourself with no other distractions, right? Was, was the hiking and the, the mountaineering a big part of that for you? Do you know, I, as a, as a kid growing up in South Africa, I, um, I was very fortunate, you know, I always had, had girlfriends who had big farms because um, I grew up right up north, you know, and a lot of my friends, they, they had big farms and my grandparents had a big farm. So I, I was always part of nature where I, where I grew right. up. I've always loved the outside world, you know, um, and uh, horseback riding, you know, out on the scrambler motorbikes, you know, it was part of life. So yeah. about a year ago, beginning of lockdown, um, more or less this time last year, March uh, yeah, March, April, May, I moved up to Scotland. Right. And, um, I mean, it was it was a decision that me and my ex made together. And because she's an, originally from up here, and mm -hmm. uh, it would have just been easier for us. Of course, we, we, we were um, going up different ways. Um, yeah. She had a family support up here to help out with the children, etc. cetera. Um, and I was, I mean, I can work from anywhere in the world, really. So I was happy to come up here and, and, the first thing I did when I've not had my daughter was literally just go out hiking. Um, and, you know, I, I really feel that when I am out in nature, you know, it just, my mind can be very busy at the best of times, you know, or used to be very, very busy. And yeah. when I'm out in nature, you know, it literally just is, it just, it's not there anymore. It just relaxes me. Um, I'm out in the open and I'm just, I feel at home, you know, so um, I, yeah, I absolutely love it, you know. Absolutely. And, and you know, when you're making these, these small videos, like I even, I, I wrote down sort of one of my favorites that you said, you said something like nothing is as chaotic as it seems. Nothing is worth diminishing your health. Nothing is worth poisoning yourself into anxiety, stress, and fear. And such powerful words. And when you're saying things like that, are you are you just walking and it's just an insight that comes up? And then yeah, I mean, I I do. Um, it's 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 basically part of my journey because a lot of I would probably say seventy percent of the TikToks that I do make is for my self help. You know, because I have got things come up and how I deal with it is going into what's coming up and going, right, so why am I feeling this, this anxiety coming up? What, yeah. Where does it stem from? And what can I do to not feel that? What, what, can, what can I say to myself to overcome this feeling? And why am I feeling this? You know, and, then, and that's basically where a lot of these things do come to me. 
Um, I mean, I do follow a lot of uh, motivational speakers anyway, and obviously with Dr. Joe and stuff, you know, um, a lot of them relate the same messages, you know, so it is things that do stuck inside your mind. Yeah. Uh, but what I do and try and do is I don't like to copy other people. I, I take what maybe 20 people would say, and I try and turn that into something that I would say in my own words, if you know what I mean, and, and relay that message that way. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, so that's where it comes on. And um, uh, yeah, a lot of the times it is just literally what I feel is, is what's coming out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, what I love about what you said just then was that when you said you, you are acknowledging this anxiety that comes up, I think that's so important, the acknowledging part yeah. you are respecting the anxiety that comes up respecting the fear respecting the anger rather than the point where many of us are at where the anxiety comes up and then we're off we're into chaos straight yeah. away right you're you are falling into that trap and spiral and allowing yourself to be completely taken away by the narrative the anxiety rather than that simple Aware, again it's awareness isn't it awareness of being the observer mm -hmm. and saying hey hey anxiety how you doing i see you okay that's it i mean if you just acknowledge that and you can you embrace that in a way that you go right uh, what what is the message that you want to give me you know mm -hmm. uh, whether it's it's gonna make, make you feel worse maybe for five minutes yes but embrace that because at the end of the day if you're going to suppress it you are just going to bottle that up and bottle it up and bottle it up and eventually that bottle is going to overflow and you're going to explode. Yeah. So the best way to deal with whatever situation is, and I, and I can't talk for other people. I can only talk for myself. And other people will say, well, you haven't gone through this, this and that. However, yeah, but I've gone through other things, you know, and, and, and anxiety is anxiety. Whether you get it from this or that, it's still anxiety, you know. So, and that's how I deal with it is, is literally you've got to take that by the scruff of the neck and going, right, let's sit down and, and sort this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And do you think that expansive places equal expansive minds? When you actually put yourself in a bigger expansive place? You know, I do actually. It's, Does that it's expand very, your perspective, do you think? Oh, I 100%. 100%. Because I think it's the same in, in any sort of situation is if you are... I read this quote the other day that it said, you will only be as wealthy as your five closest friends. And if they are all poor, you'll be poor. You know, right. um, if you and if you want to be successful, surround yourself with successful people and you will strive to be as successful as they are. And why I resonate with that is when I played my my rugby, my professional rugby days, I wasn't the best player. I was very lucky to literally just make it into that sort of level. You know, I was yeah. literally scraping the bottom of the barrel to get in there. <laughs> However, when I played with those guys that was at the elite level, my game lifted tenfold. Because yeah. you just because you are in that presence, you are literally lifted up, and you know, and, and it's it's all come, uh, coming back to this sort of spirituality spirituality side is it's all energy. If you yeah. are you know, in a group of people where the energy is vibrant, go to a retreat and everyone is happy and bumbling, uh, you are gonna you're gonna rise, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. And this even circles us back, you know, to TikTok and social media in terms of social media, of course, can be a really toxic environment, but you can use social media, even, even that, just your phone to your advantage is, could you actually unfollow anyone who does not serve the energy that you want to feel and follow every single person whose energy you wish to acquire? And yeah, it's yeah. just another step, right? So, you know, following you, following Joe Dispenza, following Lewis Howe's School of Greatness, all these different people that give these inspiring messages yeah. and just filling your mind and, and your time, right, with stuff that lifts you up rather than stuff that drains you. And oh, again, the only way we can do that, right, is by having an awareness of, okay, how do I want to feel? What yeah. is, you know, what, what's my, what is my best version of myself? How many of us have actually stopped to even consider that question? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how closely you do follow Dr. Joe's work, but when at the beginning stages of his of his um, his work, he basically explains to you that a lot of people are literally living a past present reality or um, 
a predictable future. Because if you if you take this pandemic out of context and, and it's never happened, how many people get up at the same time every morning, go straight to the loo, do their business, from there, they go straight down to the kitchen, make the same breakfast they did yesterday, have the same coffee in the same mug they had yesterday. Oh, my God. Up, rest, and they do the exact same routine. Zombies. Wiping to work, getting angry at the same traffic lights they did yesterday. <laughs> the same people when they get to work, thinking that guy is such an idiot and this guy is such an idiot, but they don't talk about it. And when they get to work, they're really thinking about lunch. And when lunch mm. comes, they're really thinking about tonight's bottle of wine. They're going to buy their favorite shop and what yeah. favorite program they're going to watch. And tomorrow, the same process re is repeated. Now, you can't expect your life or something amazing to happen in your life if you are living in that reality because mm. you can't create a different reality if you are literally living in Groundhog Day. But you're you know, creating your own reality, right? That way. You're, if, if you want fish and chips on a Friday and a Chinese takeaway on a Saturday, then that's what you're going to get. Exactly. Very, very true. And that's, you know, when, uh, when you sort of... When I went to his first retreat and I was listening and I was like, oh my God, it's just, yes, it's, it, there's so many things that just resonated, you know, and uh, yeah, it's, I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, then the question is, is, is how, how do we shift out of that? You know, there's so many of us that are stuck in our routines, even during COVID, right? That's for some people, I'm sure the routine, especially people working in a sort of nine to five situation, the routine is probably something that makes them feel the most safe. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is, it is, it's difficult, um, and it, it doesn't have to be. I, I think the, the, the key is, is to just always try and live in the present moment. You know, mm. without, without trying to predict what's going to happen in the future because yeah. we can't. Um, and that's what a lot of people do is they don't live in the, in the present moment. Because I mean, again, if you look at that aspect, how many times have you booked a holiday, and you can't wait to go on the holiday? Mm -hmm. But as soon as you get on the holiday. You are counting down the days. You, you, coming home. you know you're <laughs> going to go five more days before you get home. So you're already thinking about going home. You're not actually enjoying that present moment. Mm -hmm. And and that's another big key is we've got to always try and enjoy the moment. Because that's the only time that really matters. It is, is the present moment that you are in. Mm -hmm. And you've got to make the best and the most out of where you are now. Because that's where you are supposed to be. A hundred percent. Do you have any sort of strategies from, you know, people that have uh, inspired you throughout your journey that you constantly come back to, to bring yourself back into the present moment when you come out of balance? For me, I, you know, I always just, when it's again, it'll go back to the awareness side of things. And, and just, I always ask myself, even if I have reacted. So, I mean, uh, these times probably in the last week where I can I can honestly say yes I did react to something um, but how long are you going to stay in that state of being do you know mm -hmm. what I mean because that is that is what literally can make you sick you know mm -hmm. if you if you are constantly going to be in that anger mode for instance someone cut you off in traffic and you go oh you bloody idiot and you shout and you scream and for the next 20 minutes while you're driving behind this guy, you are constantly thinking of, oh, I just want to push you off the road, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You are just fueling that anger inside you. Yeah. But if you are aware and, and you go, right, what is this actually teaching me? What, what, why, is this, why has this happened? You know, and, and things happen for a reason, whether it's you bumping your toe or someone cut <laughs> or your mother tells you you're not a good enough father, you know, it's, it's all lessons you know and 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 it's and it's the key i think is is to go deeper and literally sit with yourself five minutes ten minutes however long it takes but sit down and just really go into that feeling to discover where does that feeling resonate from where where does that actually come from where is where does that come from because say for instance your mom told you you're not a good enough mother or you're not a good good enough father right that or you're not doing the best you can do that can resonate back down to um, when your mom, for instance, told you off when you were a six-year-old kid, yeah, when you spilled course. water, when you spilled water all the time, but all of a sudden she had a really bad day at work. She came home, you did it again, and she snapped at you. And that's the first time that's ever happened. So the person that you felt was everything to you now all of a sudden gave you something different. And that is a trauma. 
Mm-hmm. And any trauma will form a trigger response in you. Yeah. And that will go back down to that. So you didn't feel in that aspect or in that moment, you didn't feel good enough. Right. So, and that's where that then spirals out of control if you don't go back and heal that emotion. And that's mm-hmm. where I felt when I did the EFT um did amazing and even i mean the the meditation and the ayahuasca i did the breath work i did it all does the same sort of similar thing it it takes you back into where that belief was formed why why do you not feel good enough you know where where does Mm. that come from and and try and heal that aspect of your life you know and and make peace with that Mm, heightening the awareness of the present moment in terms of okay when this comes up what's actually happening to me and that's that's an interesting always been an interesting phrase to me since I've started my healing journey as well is that phrase of what's happening to me why is this happening to me and something that really shifted my mindset was well what if it's happening for me not to me Exactly. It's happening exactly. for all everything is happening for me. What if everything was for you? Even the most, you know, there are some awful things that happen in this world and things that should never ever be condoned uh, as okay. There are some horrible things, war, rape, you know, murder, awful things that, you know, they're never okay. That's not okay yeah. ever. No. But you can choose to let a circumstance or an experience break you or you can use it whatever you got from that the strength of picking yourself up from the darkest of places you can use that to move forward and use it for you and i think like you said every single modality whatever healing journey you choose to go on and it's so personal it all leads to the same thing in terms of using every single experience in life for you rather than something that is happening out of your control to you and you're just being thrown and around you know like this ping pong ball just sort of being thrown around the room and you're sort of trying to stay balanced and standing without being thrown over yeah Um, so yeah i think that's that's amazing and you know just getting out and expanding the mind. And I think it all fits in so incredibly, incredibly well. Uh, And even it's interesting watching your videos, you're almost transported to where you are walking. (laughs) You're almost just looking at that. It's so beautiful, that scenery, Uh, you know, and of course you've actually seen it with your own eyes. So I can't imagine what some of those sunrises, sunsets. Yeah, my favorite size when I, when I sort of go, do you want to go on an adventure? Oh, I love that one. It's great. You know, I do. I do love it. You know, I'm, I'm very, very lucky, you know, where, where I am um, up in the Highlands in Scotland, you know, we, um, I mean, the seasons has turned now. Today's a beautiful day. It's sunny out there. And yesterday as well, um, it was, was really nice. So um, it is getting greener again now. And uh, a lot of the snow sort of on the lower levels have, have started melting now. Um, so you get a lot of the, the, the daffodils and the, the, mm. uh, the, the flowers are starting to come out now. So it's going to be a complete different picture. So I'm looking forward to, um, to going out and making the same sort of videos in, yeah. in the sense of, um locations with um with different messages and yes yeah, it's, it's, it's it's fabulous i love it you know yeah and you know you are right that 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 kind of energy is infectious and that's what that is what i love social media for is just one person putting an energy out there where they're saying hey look at it from this perspective hey yeah. this is my growth journey what can you get from it yeah, and yeah. It's rather than, and here's why I think it's so effective and why it's so influential and and why probably why you went viral is because you are not talking at people. You are not saying like almost a lot of religion can do quite a lot is I'm enforcing this idea onto you. Yeah, yeah. It's, It's not, it's just, hey, I'm having this experience and I think that, if, if this serves you, this might get you thinking about something that could influence your experience. And that is so much more approachable because then you go, okay, I'm on board. I'm open to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. agree. agree. There was something that just came up I wanted to tell you. Um, yeah. It's completely gone out of my mind again now. <laughs> That's uh, all right. It was one of the TikToks I did. 
Um, oh, it'll come back to me in a minute. It'll but... come back, it'll come back. I mean, did you ever <laughs> expect on TikTok to have the amount of people follow you and invest in sort of your journey as as they have? Do you know, I, I, I didn't, to be honest. I mean, when it, when it first started off, you know, um, it was like I say, it was a bit of fun, and uh, I actually, actually, I sat in this flat where I am now. I sat exactly in this spot here, and I had my camera up there. Um, and uh, it was before I did all the positivity side of things. I mean, I did a little bit because what I used to do is a lot of just lip syncing to um, a guy called Creating Wonders. Mm-hmm. Um, he's big. I can't remember his name now. His uh, his TikTok name is Creating Wonders, and uh, right. he does these short little quotes. Um, and I used to lip sync a lot of his stuff, literally just going yeah. out in nature and lip sync his stuff. And those things did did all right. And a lot of people did say, um, use your own voice. We want you to use your own voice. But coming back, I, I remember I sat here and I had my camera set up there. And uh, I used to only get like 300 views per video, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I said to the, the TikTok, was basically saying to people, um, TikTok has got about 800 million users right <laughs> well and what they do is they will show you content that's the same interest or same common interest that you have got as a viewer mm. now if you look at the amount of views that i get on my videos divide that by 800 million i got to something like 0.0000000 <laughs> Something like that percentage, right? And I right. said, does that mean I'm actually unique? You know, and, and that went really well. It did, it did really well, but it is true. You know, it's, we are all unique, whether you get a million views or 300 views on your video, you know, if you just touch one person, regardless of how many followers you've got, it's like, um, I'm doing the, the three peaks with um, three other guys for Sans Charity. Uh, we were supposed to do it last weekend, but because of COVID, they've postponed it to May. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, the guy's name is Duets with T, Tony. And uh, he said uh, a thing that I thought, you know what, that's so true. He said, it doesn't matter the followers that you've got, it's just a number above the door. You know, yeah, and yeah. that doesn't matter. That doesn't make you better than A, B or C. You know, if I help one person with a message that I relay and you might help one person, you know, that's all that matters. It At is. the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that it's grown and um, it's it's doing so well. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I get hundreds of messages daily, <laughs> people just being grateful, you know, and, and that's very humbling to know that I I do make a difference, you know, in, in, in oh, people's yeah. lives. And, and it's, it's it obviously does release a lot of serotonin and, and myself, and I, I feel good about that. Um, but... I'm happy if I can just help one person out there, you know, to to better themselves and 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 sort of start their journey and and live to their full potential. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and to start their their adventure, even if they don't have a mountain to climb, right? To climb their own mountain right. in their their exactly. own way. There's a lot of people who's actually watch my videos who has got um, illnesses who who can't do those sort of things, and they are so grateful that they are getting these videos with these backgrounds so they can still enjoy that side of nature, you know? Take themselves there, yeah, to that expansive location, of course. Oh, that's just amazing. And, you know, I I think the reason that you are so successful with it is actually because if you had one person watching, you'd still be doing exactly the same thing. And it's clear, you know, you'd still be going on those walks and spreading the love, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's almost like it's a it's a second nature for me now. I don't even. I mean, in the beginning, um, I used to stress about it a lot. Okay? <laughs> I need to find the next sound. I need to find the next sound. What what can I lip lip sync next? Um, and it was quite difficult as well because what I had to do, um, my old phone, the the audio started not playing as loud oh, no. so when I was out and there was not all, always um full signal so I couldn't connect yeah. to 4G to get on TikTok to get the sounds so um yeah it started becoming a little bit of a hassle a bit of a chore and I was like oh it really made me stress um but now you know what I do is I literally just film it on my phone um I might if I, I I might film the same message maybe if I do it the first time and I feel yeah that's great I've, I've done it that's what I want to say um, I, I'll I'll just put it because I put it all on video leap 
Um, and then um, I put closed captions on there because I've had a lot of people who's deaf as well on my, oh, my TikTok who love to see it, but they can't obviously hear what I'm saying. So they've asked me to put closed captions on there. So I'll add the closed captions. <laughs> and what I also then do is if I, there's a few guys on TikTok I follow that I absolutely love their music. Uh, one is called Stephen Stanley. Okay. He's, uh, he's absolutely amazing. He's a young lad. Um, but yeah, he's just got this beautiful voice. Mm. Um, so I use a lot of his, video, his music that I would basically screen record um, and then just add it on video leap, unlink the video bit, but then keep the sound. So I'll yeah. play over the video. Um, another guy I use is a guy called Sin Finn. Um, mm. he's, uh, he's also a big spiritual guy. Um, and his music is also beautiful, you know. It's more, it's more sort of humming and, and drums and guitars and stuff that he does, um, rather than singing. Where Stephen is more of a, a singer. But then I will also, when, whenever I use their music in the in the background, because it's not link on on TikTok that it's their sound, I will always credit them to right. say that because I get a lot of people going, "Oh, what's the music in the background?" You know, so uh, but it's also just a, a nice courtesy to sort of say thank you. Oh yeah. Uh, to them as well, you know, to to be able to use their music and, and, yeah. and it gives them a bit of exposure as well as I guess if, if the video does go big. Of course, of course, yeah. No, 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 it's yeah. so cool. It's cool to get an inside look into sort of how you do it all and, and everything like that. And I mean, there's just so much, like I said, authenticity to it. And it, it really is just so nice to see someone on social media speaking their truth and just really just going hey you know th this is my journey and if it serves you that's great and if it doesn't it's great it's whatever it's just exactly. It's, exactly. it's just it's so nice you know we we do live in such a world where there's so much to see there's so much stimulation out there there's so all the time we're being stimulated with something you you're never you never really have to be alone if you you know didn't want to be there's always a phone or a video somewhere that's right. um yeah and so but to have to, you know, when you get in those social media spirals, if you're scrolling through to have something like that pop up, it is one of those videos that just makes you stop and go, oh, yeah, actually. And that provokes action. Yeah. And that's that's something, yeah, that I, I think is important. Well, I, um, I, I, uh, there was in the beginning of lockdown where I, I saw a, a clip and someone said that, your the body doesn't know the difference between me and you having a conversation in person or on a screen like this just having mm. this interaction is very important for your mental health yeah. where we were just literally a lot of people who single for instance who were just locked in their houses and they couldn't go anywhere or interact with other people it is very very important to still have that interaction and connection with other people. And this is where, why Zoom, um, their, their shares absolutely rocketed mm -hmm. during, during uh, the, the first lockdown period because everyone was literally getting on there. And it's very important for people to connect, you know? Um, and like I said, is your, your brain doesn't really know the difference between me and you sitting in the same room or me and you talking on a screen. You still, you still get that same sort of endorphins released. Yeah. Um, and I feel that's what what a lot of the TikToks are helping people with is, is the men, mental health, you know, to be able to even you don't if you don't know that person, you know, you are still connecting with that person and relating yeah. to the message they are they're putting out, you know, and and like you say, it is it is messages that makes you sit up and take note and going, OK, you know, and yeah, and yeah I, I love that. I'm very grateful that I'm in the position to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's there's strong words, you know, even even like the one I said earlier, like, you know, nothing is as chaotic as it seems. Yeah. It really makes you step back and go, right, and it following on saying, you know, why don't poison yourself with anxiety and fear? Don't you, you know, know? The mind is the mind is uh, is a thing that makes things a hundred times worse than it is. <laughs> it really does. Because yeah. you can you can make up all this stuff in your head, and you can just go, oh, my life is so bad and it's so terrible and this situation is just out of control um but it's all in there it, it literally is all in there and if you just take a step back and you go actually let's approach it from this direction or, or look at it from this angle you know my, like my mom always used to say there's always uh, the sun will always come up or there's always a, a lining behind every dark cloud you know so yeah 
yeah. 100%, 100%, amazing. Well, obviously, this conversation has been amazing and I cannot leave it without asking you, what's, what's the lesson today? Is there anything on your mind today? Well, you know- <laughs> you want to share? Yeah, just uh, I just feel people need to just open their heart, you know, uh, open your heart and just sort of welcome everything in, you know, take everything as a lesson. Don't. Oh, yeah, this is what I wanted to say earlier. Yes, what, tell me. I, uh, this is the lesson. This is the lesson. Okay. Uh, Wait, you have to you have to do the hey, hey. <laughs> so, hey, listen, if um, if anything happens to you, right, instead of going, why me? Say, try me. Ah, I love that. Yes. Is that like, has that been made yet, that video? Or is that? I think too- I have made it. I don't know if I have made it. I'm not too sure. But um, <laughs> you have to have a look back. And if not, you have to make that one. <laughs> I will do. I, will. <laughs> but that's really important. I feel as um, a lot of people will sit in woe and, and go, ah, my life is so bad. And why is these things always happening to me? You know, um, just turn it around. You Try know, me. Exactly. Yeah. Try me, bring it on. And that this, I can even feel, it can even feel in my body when I say that, when I go, okay, try me. You feel a bit like cheeky, don't you? Like, okay, okay, fear, let's see. Here we go. All right. You're sort of, it, it word, the power of words. It's crazy, right? It's just, it's amazing. And you've clearly harnessed the power of words and taken it to a whole new level. And I'm incredibly grateful for you and your your TikTok man from somewhere channel. So uh, I suggest everyone listening go follow. If I'm sure they're already following you, but um, that they should go follow you because there's some amazing content there. Um, but yeah, Johan, thank you. It's, it's been so cool talking to you, honestly. Uh, Georgie, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate that. It's an awesome.